Hey guys, Steve Harris here with MuseThemes.com. Today let's have a look at responsive design and what that means. Now, if you're following the Muse space, you've probably heard that Adobe did announce responsive design is coming to Adobe Muse, and it's going to really change things as far as how you design and how you work with the application. Now, as far as just understanding what exactly responsive design is, it's really interesting if you ask people, you get a whole bunch of different answers. Um, people kind of have different definitions on what it is. So we thought we'd do a quick video overview, kind of taking you through what exactly responsive is, how you can use it, and of course we can't show anything in Muse because it's not out yet, but we can show you kind of some tips and tricks for how people begin to work with responsive layouts. So first of all, what is responsive design? Basically, responsive is an approach to web design that aims for you to have a single site that works well and looks beautiful on any device. So if we have a look at the Apple site here, you can see that this layout here would be for our desktop or larger screen sizes. If I begin to scale the browser down, things adjust and move depending on the size of the screen. So the image actually just shifted down somewhere in there and as I keep going, you see that our upper navigation is getting a little bit tight. So at some point here, you're going to see that break or they're going to add a breakpoint and things are going to change. And that just happened there. So it was somewhere in this area. We had all of our navigation visible and then suddenly it was just too tight. So what they did is they decided to put it behind this kind of hidden menu. So this is probably a layout that's more appropriate for a tablet device. If we keep going smaller and smaller, eventually you can see that the layout entirely shifted. So now rather than having this two column structure with an image on the left and text on the right, it's actually become just a one column site and it stays that way all the way down to the pretty much the smallest screen size you could do. So this is probably more designed for a mobile device. Now with responsive design, it's important to note that you're not designing layouts for specific devices anymore. What you're going to do is you're going to design your website and if you scale it down and it's no longer looking good, you can add a breakpoint and adjust it to look good at that breakpoint. The point of responsive design is that you don't need to be thinking about iPhone 5 size, iPhone 6 size, portrait, landscape, that sort of thing. You just need to think about having your site look good across all screen sizes. So a really interesting graphic that I came across was this one that says content is like water. So it says you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle, and so on. So this is how you want to design your website. You can see here that the water would be, of course, your content, and it should expand to fit every different device and every different screen size out there. So the way the Muse currently does uh, mobile design is something called adaptive layout so or, or an adaptive approach. So if we take a site currently built in Muse and I begin to scale it down, there are some elements that appear to adjust. For example, the menu on the top right here in the background image, they are moving as I scale the browser down. Now that's because this is a full width image and this is a pinned menu. But when I get down to kind of this more tablet size, you can see that things just start to kind of go off the screen. And unfortunately we get this scroll bar on the bottom for kind of navigating left and right. Now this is because Muse doesn't have responsive design right now. So what it does is if you hit the site from a mobile device, it detects that and it's going to redirect you to another site. And in this case, it redirects you to this site, which is the phone instance. And you can see the phone instance looks more like this and it's nicely laid out so that you can browse it on a mobile device. Now, of course, if you've worked with Muse before, you know the frustrating part of this is that you have multiple sites where you have to lay out different content. If you change one thing on one site, you have to change it on the other. That's the great thing about responsive. You're working on one site and you're just adjusting elements as you go. Now, the key thing to remember is that because those are the same elements as you scale down, if you don't want to see an element on a lower breakpoint or a smaller breakpoint, you don't delete it. You're going to hide it because if you delete it off a small breakpoint, it's going to delete off bigger breakpoints as well. So with the Apple site here, uh, the entire site is really beautifully responsive, of course, not surprising for Apple. And you begin to see kind of patterns in how people are laying out content. Now in this example on the home page, you've got these kind of four content blocks. And as I begin to scale it down and they get too tight, eventually it shifts to be still four content blocks. However, it's shifted to be a two column layout rather than a four column layout. 
If I keep going, eventually when they get too tight, it's going to shift to just a one column layout. So you really will start to see that many sites actually design kind of with this mentality, this content block mentality in mind. You can see on this site, which is just a really nice example that we found, although I don't really know what the site is about, to be honest. Uh, they've got these content areas on the top right, bottom right, and left side. And what they do as you scale it down is they basically keep the content areas all together and they just adjust the column structure there. And then eventually it goes to a single column as well. So you may want to begin with this pattern in mind or this layout system in mind. Here's another great example of a responsive site. It's the All Saints website. And as you begin to scale it down, something interesting is happening. Now the upper navigation or the navigation on the left here isn't changing. And on the right side, it's getting a little bit smaller. But the real key in this one is the images. So as you scale the site down, these images are scaling down proportionately. So often images will just crop from the left and right side. That was kind of more like what you were seeing from the Apple site. See, it's just cropping it left and right. Whereas on this site, it's actually scaling them up and down proportionately. So we can see more and more of what's below here. When of course we get down to more of a tablet sized layout, then it shifts to a different column structure. It's hidden the navigation behind a hamburger menu here. And we could continue going down all the way to what would be more of their phone layouts. So another interesting thing that you can do to inspect responsive sites is you can use developer tools in any browser. So I'm using Chrome. So if I just push control and basically right click on the page, I can go inspect element. And what this is gonna do is bring up my developer tools. Now I have something turned on here. It's in the top of developer tools and it's kind of for emulating a mobile device. So if I turn that on, now what I can do is actually scale down this kind of sidebar and you can actually start to measure where these breakpoints are. So if I go ahead and scale down from here, you can see that when it breaks there, it gives me an actual dimension. So this is breaking or there's a breakpoint somewhere around 660 pixels or maybe a little bit higher than that. So as you begin to explore responsive, you should use the developer tools in the browser to start measuring sites and looking at kind of the patterns they're using for breakpoint sizes. Now, of course, you don't need to add preset breakpoints to your sites. You just need to add as many as it takes to have your site look beautiful across all screen sizes. Another aspect of responsive design that we've encountered so far is it's really tempting to design your layout and then of course, you wanna look at it on a desktop by scaling it down, but it's hard not to focus on every pixel in between the desktop size and the mobile size. But the truth is you need to remember that when people are viewing your site, and especially if they're on mobile devices, they're viewing it at one size. So maybe they're looking at it at this size. They're not going to be expanding and scaling the browser up and down. That's something designers do and not many people are gonna be doing on your site. So it's more important that you focus on making your layout work and your layout logical than it is to pay attention to every bit of pixel space all the way up to desktop size. That's just not realistic and it's not going to be happening as users browse your website. The last thing I want to touch on for responsive design is an idea that is called Mobile First. And Mobile First was initially published in a book by Luke W. And this strategy aims for you to start building your website at a mobile size initially. Now, it's a really interesting concept because basically the mobile site is often the most simplified and and it has the most important elements on it in the easiest to find way. So there's a theory that if you start with that on your mobile design first, then you expand upwards from that, that you're going to end up with a much better quality site because it's not going to be a matter of just hiding things and trying to fit a ton of extra content into a small layout. You're really gonna focus on what's important, what I need to be showing, and building up bigger websites from there. So I hope this video has helped to explain why responsive design is so important nowadays and to help you get start to get thinking about how you want to design your sites using the upcoming responsive Muse. Now at Muse Themes, of course, we have a ton of products that we're getting ready for the responsive release, including lots of themes, our widgets have all been revised to work with it, and we've got some exciting new things as well for you. So it's an exciting time coming up and we're really looking forward to guiding you through the new responsive release of Muse. Thanks for watching. Cheers.